What is up everybody and welcome back to the driveway where this week we're dealing with a red hot sports sedan that consistently lives for the pursuit of perfection. This week our friends at Lexus have sent us over the 2018 IS. So let's get to it. And as always, our walkthrough today begins with a journey under the hood. Now the vehicle that we've been testing this week is the IS350 F Sport. And if you're familiar with Lexus's current nomenclature, it gives you a little bit of a clue as to what lies underneath. Now the engine itself is a 3.5 liter quad cam 24 valve V6 equipped with things such as direct fuel injection and the company's dual variable valve timing with intelligence. In the IS350, it makes 311 horsepower and 280 pound-feet of torque. It's connected to either an eight-speed sport direct direct shift automatic transmission for rear wheel drive models or a more conventional six speed automatic transmission for IS models equipped with all wheel drive. Now for a compact sports sedan that weighs nearly 3,600 pounds as tested here, it's fair to say that the IS 350's performance is certainly more than sprightly. This baby Lexus will knock out a zero to 60 run in just 5.6 seconds and go on to an electronically limited top speed of 142 miles per hour. However, unfortunately with all this power in place, the fuel economy is a little bit subpar for the class. The IS350 comes in at just 20 miles per gallon in the city and 28 miles per gallon on the highway with this rear wheel drive model I'm testing here. Now just like a lot of its competition, the IS does offer quite a lot of equipment as standard stuff, including the keyless access system with push button ignition across all the models. Now as far as the fob itself, it is a pretty typical Lexus key fob, sort of more elegant in its design with things like this little metallic silver piece here designated for your key ring, but it has all of the typical functions such as lock, unlock, release the trunk, and the panic function as well, along with a little releasable key blade out of the lower left hand side of the key, which can be used to do everything from unlock the doors to lock the glove box. But being the fact it's keyless, all you have to do is have the key fob anywhere within the vehicle, then simply put your foot on the brake, hit the button way up at the top of the dashboard, and... Now of course you can't call a car like this a true sports sedan without having the looks to back up the performance. And the Lexus F Sport division certainly does know a thing or two about that, judging by the fact they've applied this theme to several of their vehicles over just the past couple of years or so. But being the fact that my particular tester's price tag is knocking on the door of $51,500 as shown here, there are definitely quite a lot of features to go through. So we begin here at the front, and my particular tester does have full LED headlights with auto adjusting and and also the standard auto high beam assist as a part of the standard Lexus Safety System Plus in place on my tester. Down below that, we also have the standard automatic daytime running lights. These are also full LEDs, but of course we do also have the optional F-Sport front fascia, which certainly does give the car a little bit more of an aggressive appearance. This is also amplified a little bit more by the fact that Lexus has actually taken the chrome outline of the spindle grille and actually dressed it in more of a dark chrome finish. So a nice little contrast here to this non-metallic red line exterior here in place on my tester. Now there's no particular fog lights on this, although we do have sensors for the active parking assist system, both front and rear. And of course we also have things such as a sensor right here behind the Lexus logo for things like the dynamic radar cruise control and the pre-collision system with uh, pedestrian detection. Now with the F Sports exterior looking as sporty as it does, it would be an absolute tragedy for the car to not be rolling on some kind of sporty wheel and tire package. And of course the F Sport IS definitely delivers. With a set of dark gray finished 18 inch F Sport specific alloy wheels mounted on Dunlop performance tires. Underneath we do have four wheel ventilated disc brakes as well as a double wishbone suspension in front and multi-link suspension setup in the rear, all controlled with the adaptive variable suspension specific 
specific to this F-Sport model. Now moving along down the sides of the IS, most of what you'll see in this area is pretty typical Lexus stuff. We do have body colored side view mirrors with the integrated LED turn signals. And here on my IS350, we also do have a blind spot monitoring system integrated into the upper corner of each mirror. Moving along down the sides here on the front door handles, we find the touch pads for the advanced keyless access system, which I showed you guys earlier. To unlock the vehicle, you just simply grab either one of the front door handles. But it's funny because unlocking the driver's door only is done by grabbing the driver's door handle, but if you grab the passenger door handle, it unlocks all four of the doors. And the same can be said for locking the vehicle. You just simply touch your finger over the small little indented area at the front of either one of the front door handles, and if you touch it on the passenger side, it locks all four doors, and the same can be said over on the driver's side. Moving up top, we do have the standard power tilting and sliding sunroof, although no panoramic sunroof option is available, but that's not really a big issue, seeing the fact that this is such an expensive of car in many other ways other than the sunroof. Now from the side, we move towards the IS's rear end, and the design still does have quite a bit of a sporty nature to it, but it seems a little bit more reserved than the sort of in-your-face approach that you get when looking at this car from the front. But you still do have a few things at least to talk about back here, including these full LED taillights here with the halogen turn signals and the LED reversing lights all together. Up at the top, we do have the optional lip spoiler in place here on my tester, although I will say the car doesn't necessarily look bad without it either because the trunk does actually have a nice little lip in the edge of it or at least the upper part of it that then trails off towards the rest of the deck lid. Down below you also do have all of your applicable badging as you would expect and also a nice little backup camera hidden front and center under the large rear Lexus logo. Moving down to the rear bumper we do also have the four sensors that line the rear bumper for the rearward part of the active parking assist. Also back here and hidden from view you will find some of the sensors for the rear cross traffic alert system that coincides with the blind spot monitoring setup that's in place here on my test car. Now, finishing everything off and really giving this car a true sporty characteristic, we do have the dual trapezoidal exhaust back here, and even though this thing only has six cylinders and just over 300 horsepower, the car still does make quite an impressive sound when you get on the gas. Now, as you would expect from a Lexus, my particular tester's features list is quite extensive. So, starting here directly in front of the driver, we do have the three-spoke multifunction steering wheel. It is heated, leather-wrapped, and also partially perforated over here on the nine and three positions with these big, thick, chunky grips up top. And of course, you also have those metallic silver-painted paddle shifters there on the back. Now, I love the paddles in this car. They have a nice definitive pull to them, and they are extremely responsive with this car's eight-speed automatic transmission. Now, as far as the button arrangements, you do have a lot of typical things, like over here on the left, you have the hands-free radio and volume controls, as well as hands-free Bluetooth with voice recognition. And then over here on the right, you have the aero pad and a couple of different buttons, which control the thin film transistor display, which comprises the entire gauge cluster, as well as a couple of extra buttons for the standard Lexus Safety System Plus here on my tester. We do have the lane departure warning uh, with the active steering assist, as well as the distance sensor for the standard dynamic radar cruise control, the other features of which are down here in the typical Toyota Lexus-esque position at about the four o'clock position here on the wheel itself. So even though the IS's thin film transistor gauge cluster may seem kind of small to most eyes, there is a lot of information to go through in here, and you can access it really two separate ways. Now, the default setting is with the large tachometer here in the middle with the adjustable display uh, with the digital speedometer, gear selector, uh, things like your vehicle range and so on, and also things like your temperature gauge and fuel gauge relegated to the outer two portions of the display. However, there is a button on the steering wheel that sort of looks like the pages of a book, and the moment you press it, 
you suddenly see that your tachometer shifts over and now you have things like your odometer front and center with your gear selector and digital speedometer. But over here on the left, you have the large main screen that would normally be front and center in most of the company's other products. Now you do have a multitude of information, so we'll try to go through it as quick as possible. Here on the main screen, you do have your current and uh, average MPG, at least after the fuel economy meter has been reset. You can then scroll down, you have things such as vehicle range, uh, mileage, after refuel and also the time it's been since the vehicle's engine has been started. You also have things such as an economy indicator, a g-force meter, and also other things like your tire pressure monitoring, your gear position, and even things like a sway warning. So this is like for people who love to take road trips. Um, it's actually a timer that will tell you when it's a, an appropriate time to pull over and take a break, stretch your legs, and then make yourself ready for the next leg of your journey. So you keep going and all of a sudden you find a black blank screen. I'm not sure why Toyota and Lexus do this on a lot of their cars, but they have this blank screen here, and I can only imagine it's for people who don't want to be reading all of that stuff while they're driving along. This is the area where they mainly want to be looking. Now, aside from the gadgetry all over the steering wheel, you do also have a couple of other little buttons, most of which are actually hidden from sight when the door is actually closed, thanks to the door panel, which actually sticks in a little bit further than normal. Now, you do have a lot of your standard conveniences, like your odometer and trip functions, and also your instrumentation dimming, but also other buttons like the automatic high beam assist, which I mentioned earlier, things like the optional blind spot monitoring and intuitive parking assist, and also as an additional option on my tester, the $210 power assisted rear sunshade, which rises up like a curtain out of the back windshield. So you automatically push this button, take a look behind you, and... Now in terms of infotainment and entertainment, this is one of my more favorite features with my tester this week, which is the larger navigation screen here and also the available Mark Levinson audio system. Now there is quite a lot to go through, so we'll just kind of skim through it here a little bit. We do have the destination and map functions over there on the left. You have your AM and FM and Sirius satellite radio, Bluetooth media streaming and connectivity, your Bluetooth phone in the middle, the Lexus Inform app suite there on the far side, also things like vehicle information, and also the display that can control the climate controls if you decide not to use the usual bank of buttons here down below the navigation screen. Now, the other thing that I really love about this screen is the fact that it's not fixated on some tablet-like fixture. It's fixed into the dash, but it's still very much in my line of sight as a driver, especially considering how low I sit here in the driver's seat. Not to mention, I do love the graphics. Everything is crisp and clear, even things like the navigation system where some people would uh, complain that the graphics are a little bit basic, but everything is understandable. And one of my other favorite things is when you turn the lights on at night in typical luxury car fashion, the entire back of the screen blacks out, the roads become a lot brighter, and of course it turns itself into the nighttime mode. Now, as far as the Mark Levinson audio system, this thing packs a heck of a punch. It's not like a Rockford Fosgate system or anything like that for those of you who like a more bassy sound system, but it is crystal clear with pretty much any tune you put on. Now before continuing on with the rest of the interior, I did want to show you at least a couple of other functions within the screen here since there is so much information to go through. Now the first of which is the functional climate control systems, again for those who don't want to use the physical bank of buttons down here, or at least want to see a little bit more of a clear display as to what's going on with the dual zone automatic system. Now basically it's like the Lexus NX that I reviewed last week, which is you basically scroll over any of the icons, be it fan speed, climate zones, and so on, and all you have to do is push down on the little mouse selector itself, and that will automatically change whatever you need, be it temperature, fan speed, or any of the like. Now, I did also mention that this screen over here can be deleted. Now, if you're in the navigation screen, there's a little tab up by where that back arrow would be, and all you simply do is scroll over it, push down, and suddenly your navigation goes from split screen to full screen. So now moving beneath that giant infotainment screen, 
screen, we get to the dual zone automated climate control system, which uses this physical bank of buttons combined with a couple of other touch sensitive functions for things like temperature control. Now you have your usual array of things, your automatic AC, the ability to turn the system off, your fan speed change, climate zone change, the dual zone function, which when you have the system off, as you change the temperature, they both change at the same time. However, with it on, you suddenly now can change the temperatures independent of each other. You have your AC introduction, uh, your air conditioning recycling, and also your front and rear defrost with your heated exterior mirrors. Now, moving down below that, we also have a rather old school feature, an older compact disc player. I'm surprised anybody still even listens to those anymore, but just in case people do, Lexus has still included that feature here in the IS. Now, on either side of that, you do have your typical buttons, your power and volume knob, as well as your tuning and scrolling knob, and also a couple of other various features, including your play function, your seek track buttons, the button for the media, which could take you to your Bluetooth media streaming, your radio function, and also the eject button, another typical CD feature. Now moving on to the lower part of the center console here, we get to, first off, the selector for the 8-speed Sport Direct Shift Automatic Transmission. Now in this F-Sport model with over 300 horsepower, this transmission is extremely responsive. There is a slight hesitant delay between, say, pulling the paddle and the car actually changing gear. However, the car changes gear almost like the functions of a dual clutch transmission without any of the drawbacks of, say, a slip when you actually take off. Now, the movement of the gear shifter itself is very nice. It's very authoritative, if I can call it that. You do have the manual mode. Like I said, you pull down to go down a gear, push forward to go up a gear, and of course, that coincides with the paddles up here on the steering wheel, and also put it in reverse, and you do have the typical split screen backup camera up there in the navigation screen. Now, you can, I think, get that to go away, but at the same time, you do have the guidance lines with trajectory, so when you turn the steering wheel, obviously, they turn in whichever way you are going. And also, when you put the vehicle in park, you can hear the vehicle does have the automatic door lock, so you put the vehicle in any gear other than park, and the car will automatically lock itself until you undo that function. Now, in front of that, we do have the functions for the optional heated and ventilated F-Sport specific leather bound seats. Now, just to mention the seats for a second, I love the support they give, especially around my midsection and around my thighs. And also being the fact I am a little more broad shouldered, I do respect the fact that there is a wider space up here at the top to allow my broad shoulders to fit nice and comfortably. Now, the controls for the Lexus infotainment system, this is where I was saying the IS is starting to show its age. In the 2018 NX300 hybrid that I tested last week, it had the remote touch interface, which was a giant touch screen down here in the center console, but instead you actually now have a physical bank of buttons with a physical little scroll pad in order to select all your different functions up in the infotainment. Now, that is a little bit old school, but it still works all the same, although I'm not gonna say I'm the biggest fan of it because it can be a little bit glitchy and also at the same time it does feel a little bit interesting when you get that sort of notchy movement in the mouse pad when you go to select an item. Moving on from that though we do get to the three stage or in this case four stage drive mode select system. So as you can see you do have the eco mode, the normal mode, but then in the sport section you have two different settings. You have sport and sport plus. Now one of my favorite little party tricks of the IS is when you go from any mode other than eco or normal in the gauge cluster, say over to just sport, for example, just watch the tachometer. Now you can see that the tachometer is a full white, and that means that you are now in the sportiest of modes here in the IS's drive control system. And finally, as a nice little finishing touch here to this long center console, we do also have the leather bound central piece here at the back of the center console. We do have two USB ports, as you can see with the cord sticking out there, as well as an auxiliary jack for those who want to plug in their media devices. You do have quite a bit of space in there, although it's not exactly deep, um, but it is lined in felt, again, adding to the nice little luxurious touches around the interior. Now moving up to the roof line for just a second, we do also have the standard auto dimming rear view mirror with the home link garage door system as noted by the three little buttons here on the bottom of the mirror itself. But also more importantly, and thank goodness this isn't an option, we do have the standard power tilting and sliding sunroof. A lot of cars that I've tested in this category offer a sunroof as an option, but with my particular vehicle being as expensive as it is, it does come with this sunroof standard. So you lift back this suede covered little partition here 
here, and at the touch of the button, you can either tilt it up, like that, or do one better and open the whole thing with just one push of a button. Now, unfortunately, due to the IS's rather small dimensions, one of the areas where this car falls down a little bit is in rear seat space and leg room. Now, I'm six foot one, and I'm not exactly small, and my knees are directly in the back of the driver's seat. Now, thankfully, both the backs of the front seats are completely encased in leather, no cheap plastics or anything like that there, and as you can see, they are fully indented to at least attempt to allow for taller passengers to fit back here. Now, you also do have two leather map pockets, one in the back of each of the front seats, and also containing to the or pertaining to the back seats back here, you also do have things such as the 60-40 split fold function, uh, thus increasing your trunk space. That's done by the little triggers up here at the top of each of the edges of the seats. And you also do have a nice little leather bound center console here with a nice little pair of cup holders that pops right out of the middle. Now again, due to the IS's overall size, unfortunately another area that falls a little bit flat on its face is cargo area. So we open the trunk here, and despite the fact that the opening actually looks rather sizable, you're only looking at 10.8 total cubic feet of cargo space. Now you can extend that with these 60-40 split fold seats as I mentioned before, but unfortunately due to the dimensions of the trunk, this means that pretty much every rival in the IS's class has more rear cargo capacity than this vehicle. So unfortunately, another area where the IS falls a little bit down when it comes to the competition. Now, of course, you can't have all this horsepower and performance without a good bit of safety just in case something goes wrong. And of course, my particular IS does have quite a lot of things in that category. Things like the full array of airbags, the driver and passenger front impact airbags, the driver's knee airbag, the side impact and side curtain airbags, and not to mention the Lexus Safety System Plus that is a standard feature here on my particular tester. Now, some of the features of that safety system we've already covered, but just in case you weren't listening, we do have things such as the dynamic radar cruise control, the lane departure alert with active steering assist, the forward collision alert with pedestrian detection, and also as an optional feature here, we do also have blind spot monitoring just to name a few of the things on that list. Now, with all of those things in place, the IS has earned an overall IIHS safety rating of five stars, although the front crash area only received four out of five stars in that same regard. But overall, in the end, the IS has just been an absolute joy to drive, safety features and all, and in the end, if you're still looking for a sports sedan that, her that carries the performance and the luxury, the IS is still very much a valid contender. And unfortunately, on that note, everybody, our time here with the 2018 Lexus IS350 F Sport has now unfortunately drawn to a close. I do hope everybody's enjoyed this review as much as I've had fun making it for y'all. Now, if you guys like what you see, please do give this video a thumbs up and also be sure to click that subscribe button down below for many more videos like this and more to come in the future. But in the end, a huge thanks goes out to the folks at Lexus for providing this IS for an entire week of fun-filled testing. But in the end, guys, I hope you enjoyed the review and I will see y'all next time. Take care, everybody, and stay safe.